Hey guys, Craig McCormick here from DestructivePixels.com and today I've got a quick tutorial for you on how I took this picture of Bowfielder Rock in Scotland and turned it into a black and white image using Silver FX Pro 2 from Nick Software to look something like this. Alrighty, so here I have the image open inside of Photoshop. Now what I want to do is go up to the filter menu here up at the top, and navigate down here to the bottom where all my plugins are, and go to Nick Collection and go to Silver FX Pro 2. Now, Silver FX Pro 2, what is it? It is the black and white program by uh, the Nick Software Collection, and this is a great black and white program. It's really simple to use, and you can get black and white images really effectively from it. And uh, but. By default, as you can see here, the natural or neutral preset that it puts on by default is a little flat, it's a little gray, and it doesn't have great contrast in it. But the great thing about this plugin here is it's got a great section of presets that I use all the time, um, especially with any plugin software, but particularly with uh, the Nick collection. Really have a look at the presets that they have because it's a really great starting point. Presets are rarely ever the end game for your image. They're rarely a one-click deal, but they're a great starting point. And that is what I actually did here. I used the high structure harsh preset that they have here. This is actually the preset that I actually used when I was starting to process the Im this image. Uh, and all I'm gonna do is click here and you can see it already adds a bunch of structure to the clouds. Now, some people have heard about structure in Silver Fix Pro, but they don't really know what structure is. I'm just gonna give a really quick demonstration here. I'm just gonna take this structure slider and take it down to zero. And I want you to look at the clouds in particular. It does a whole bunch to the rocks, but really it's great for clouds. Structure is this magic slider inside Silver FX Pro that really makes your black and white images pop. So all I'm gonna do is just take this structure slider and I'm just gonna drag it to the right. And watch what happens to those clouds. You see what that's like? That's before. And just with dragging it just to there, it already makes it a huge difference. It's such an amazing slider. I really do love the structure slider. But I don't want to go too high on the structure slider because it's, it adds structure to the overall image. And uh, sometimes you can get a little bit crazy with it and it does look a little bit funky. So that's why they give you the options here to do structure specifically for the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. So let's go ahead and actually mess around with that stuff now because um, Although it did great wonders for the sky, I think it can actually do with a bit more within the highlights. So what I want to do is I want to go to the highlight slider here under the structure menu. And I just want to drag it to the right a little bit just to add some extra contrast within the sky. So if I just go here back to zero and I slide it to the right where I want, you can see it just adds a little bit punchiness to this section here where all the bright clouds are. If I just go to before and then after, you can see it just punches that through just a little bit more so it really does wonders for that for the mid-tones um it's already got 27 percent up and it's doing great wonders for the rocks here it's bringing out really cool contrast crunchiness but i just want to increase that a little bit more i don't want to go too crazy with it so about 45 looks about right for here for the shadows, I don't actually need to do all that much because they're already pretty crunchy at this point. You can see within the, bl the blacks here, it's already pretty dark. I just want to maybe increase it a little bit uh, specifically because I want it to affect the main part of the rock. And also this foreground rock, it's looking a little flat and I just want to increase that a little bit. And it is doing some good stuff there. So about 20, 25 is about right. But one thing I definitely want to make sure at this point is I want to make a good white and a good black point. And that is the key to a good black and white image is having a solid white point and a solid black point. Because from there, it's all to do with your brain and how it assesses color and tone and things like that. But if your brain and your eye can see a solid white point and a solid black point, it can then figure out what all the tones are in between. So a good black point and a good white point is definitely key. Uh, and one thing I don't really need to increase the whites because we've got a lot of good whites within the sky still. We've got some great contrast, but it's definitely still white. You can definitely still tell that it's a sky. But one thing I do want to do is just increase the blacks a little bit. I don't want to go too far with it. I just want to make it a little bit stronger. 
uh, you can actually see it's doing some good stuff to the corners of the sky. Um, it's actually really affecting the blues within the sky. So if I just increase that a little bit, if I go all the way to the right, you can see it's doing a lot to the sky, but I don't want to go too far with it because uh, I'm going to be messing around with the brightness settings in a minute. But about 45 looks about right for here. It's doing some great stuff to the overall image and it's giving me a really good solid black point. So at this point, I just wanna go and mess around with the brightness settings within this. Uh, and again, I actually just wanna to tone down the highlights a little bit because this just looks like pure white and you definitely don't want pure white within an image because it just looks like a blown out highlight. So I just wanna drag the highlight slider to the right just to darken up the highlights. If I just put it back to zero and you just make, keep an eye on the bright parts of the image here and I just drag it down to the right, can see it's just making a good difference and it's just pulling back some of the brightness here. I don't want to go too far with it. About minus 25 looks about right for this. For the midtones, I don't really need to do anything at all because uh, midtones is really affecting the rocks and stuff like that and that looks great at this point. For the shadows, uh, I actually kind of want to increase the shadows a little bit uh, because this rock here in particular is really quite dark and although it's not an, uh, a main focus point for the image, of course this big guy in the middle is, uh, I don't want it to be so black that it's actually distracting because it is a big blob of black. So let's just increase the shadows a little bit and you can see it does just help out, bring some of the little details back in the shadows in this rock here. But as you can see, that was really quick, just with like a couple of sliders and a few minutes of just tweaking the image, playing around and going through it all. Um, let's just jump and actually do a really cool before and after. Uh, this is one feature that I really do like about Nick software in particular, is uh, they actually have this compare button up at the top. And what it does is it compares the, the image as it is now to what it was, what it looked like when you brought it in. Uh, and as you can see, if I just hold it down, you can see that is the original neutral preset that it applied when I brought it in. And as you can see, it's very, very flat, uh, especially in the rocks. They just look gray. They look really flat gray. And that's because they don't have a solid black and white point. But if I take it off, you can see it just punches that contrast through and it really makes this a killer black and white image. And one thing uh, I actually want to do here is down at the bottom here, of the global adjustments um, layer panel is the tonality protection. And I just wanna increase the highlight protection a little bit. And what that does is it helps it from the, it protects the highlights from being totally crunched out and getting really noisy and just messy and a bit muddy. And it just makes sure that they've got a really good solid highlight white point, but without actually affecting the overall brightness of the highlight itself. But with that, it's pretty much done. All I need to do at this point is click OK, and it's gonna save that out. And I now have a solid, really great starting point for a black and white image using Silver FX Pro 2. And as you can see, it is a super easy program to use. Uh, it's really effective and you get great black and white images out of it really quite quickly. So hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial uh, on how easy it is to use Silver FX Pro 2. Uh, I definitely don't use it as much as I really should, but I'm definitely gonna be using it a lot more in the future because I love black and white landscape images. I think they're a really cool thing that you can get, especially when you manage to get tones and you get really great skies like I managed to luckily capture here in this image. So hopefully, again, you've enjoyed this tutorial. I've been Craig McCormick and I'll catch you in the next one.